Um, my name is Mandy and I did my PhD with Earthbite and I'm very delighted to be able to share some of my contributions here at the BGH showcase and they center mainly on oceanographic and sedimentary processes. And so I'm going to touch on two contributions that I've made and the first one pertains to what I've dubbed a long slope oceanographic and sedimentary flows and here I'm specifically specifically going to talk about uh, bottom currents along slope bottom currents and the second one will deal with down shelf and down slope flows and I'll mainly discuss turbidity current action and low stand rivers. And so this first contribution was a study on the global distribution of what are known as contrarite drifts, which are piles of sediment on the sea floor that are formed by bottom currents. And so I, I recently helped a researcher make, another researcher make this series of, of figures I'm about to show you here. So this is a projection here called the spillhouse projection, and it shows the interconnectivity of the world's ocean basins here. So this is a schematic showing global ocean circulation pathways and deep water formation sites and upwelling sites as well. And this raster here shows modeled mean annual bottom current speed. And then on top of that in orange, we have the, the distribution of these contrite drift features on the seafloor. And so we found that in support of previous work that contrites are indeed found along ocean circulation pathways and in areas with elevated bottom current activity. And we also found a potential new mechanism for their formation, which is deep eddy circulation. And so we ultimately suspect that these eddies tr trigger benthic storms and these benthic storms allow sediments to accumulate over geological timescales and they end up forming these contrite drifts. And so this was a nice example of putting existing data into a digital format and comparing it with an ocean model that's actually generally designed to study ocean processes on very short timescales on decadal timescales. Um, but ultimately we decided to use this model in combination with the geological data because uh, we wanted to understand what were, what was causing these shorter lived uh, processes to occur. And we ultimately believe that these mechanisms are still quite important to consider if you want to understand the global scale, long-term basin development implications of these oceanographic processes. And the second contribution includes work that was published last year and we used Badlands in order to simulate processes on the Great Barrier Reef margin over the course of a low sand and a marine transgression. And this project was possible because Badlands was modified to be able to simulate processes that operate on mixed carbonate siliciclastic margins. And so these margins actually have their own separate behaviors and their own, own separate development in comparison to pure siliciclastic or pure carbonate margins. And so we were able to reproduce a lot of geomorphological and sedimentary features on this margin for the first time. And this meant that we could actually start to propose some new mechanisms for the formations of, of, of formation of many features that we were unable to provide a, a solid mechanism for in the past. And so we found that ultimately at low stand reef platforms uh, reroute rivers on the shelf and cause them to carve out submarine channels. We also found that reef platforms instigate more turbidity currents on the slope and help carve out these canyons, which are actually visible in the animation here. And so again, these findings would have been impossible without uh, the recent development and badlands, and I, I found it quite remarkable that these very tiny little organisms could have such a profound impact on, uh, on submarine landscapes. And so just to close, if you'd like to read more about these findings, um, feel free to have a look at those papers. And just FYI, I'm still in Australia. I'm working as a postdoc at UNSW's uh, School of Civil and Environmental Engineering in the Coastal Engineering Group. So if you have any other questions about these findings, feel free to pop them in the chat and um, feel free to ask any questions if you have any burning questions about coastal erosion, because that's what I'm currently working on now. Thank you for inviting me along. It's been really fun.